Hello everybody and welcome to Line and Angle Relationships. Let's go. All right, so first we're going to talk about parallel lines. So parallel lines have no point of intersection. And we can say that these are parallel by using this M and then double line N. Uh, so parallel lines are two lines in a plane that never intersect. Piece of cake. Straight line. So a transversal is a single line crossing those parallel lines. So it would look like this. So this would be the transversal. It's just like this. And we're going to examine a bunch of properties with that, but that transversal is that one. So we have two parallel lines and a transversal. Moving on. Okay, so there are some names of some special angles when you get this transversal across two parallel lines. So the first is the interior angles. These are the angles that lie inside of the parallel lines. So this would be number four, number three, number six, number five. Um, you can also see it's like the interior angles are kind of these little horseshoe ones in here. Okay, next are gonna be exterior angles. So the ones that were interior were the inside, exterior would be the outside. So these are the ones that lie outside the parallel lines. So this would be one, two, eight, and seven. So this would be one, two, eight, and seven. You can also think these are the ones outside the parallel lines. So I have two parallel lines. The outer ones are the exterior angles. All right, alternate interior angles is exactly what it is. These are the ones that are on the opposite side of the transversal. So that would give me, so four and six would be one, and three and five would be two other ones. Those are on alternate sides of the interior angles. And we'll have some more properties about that later. All right, so we next is up is alternate exterior angles. So we're gonna alternating sides of the exterior angles. So that would be one and seven would be alternate exterior angles. And let's change a different color here. Two and eight would be the other alternate exterior angles. All right, so I color-coded this one a little bit. So corresponding angles are in the same position of the parallel lines in relation to the transversal. So like 1 and 5 are in the same position on the parallel lines. 2 and 5 would be another one. Or sorry, 2 and 6, 3 and 7, 4 and 8. So kind of color-coded so you can kind of see where that is. So we'll talk about those and have some properties about them. Okay, so key concept here, parallel lines cut by a transversal. So you have corresponding angles, that would be the one, five, two, six. Corresponding angles are congruent or equal. Uh, but in geometry terms, we will use this symbol to say congruent. Um, alternate interior angles are congruent. So four and six would be alternate interior angles. So those two angles, this angle and this angle, would be congruent. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. So two and eight would be congruent like this. All right, vertical angles, one of my favorite parts. I don't know why I like vertical angles, I just do. Vertical angles, each pair of opposite angles made by two intersecting lines. So these two angles would be congruent. Of course, I just changed the color and now I write on something white. And the outer ones are also so these two and these two are the vertical angles. They are also congruent, but we'll get there. Adjacent angles. These are two angles that have a common vertex and a common side. So it would look something like this. I'd have an angle and another angle, a common side. Two angles, common angle, and they have a common angle down here and a common side in the middle. That does not look like this, though. They have to have a, this is one that would have not have a common vertex, but a common side. So this is not one. Okay, complementary angles. If you're giving someone a compliment, then there are, their sum is 90. So complementary angles would look something like this. So it's going to be a 90 degree angle. And this one plus this one equals 90. We'll get all kinds of things about that later, where we add these two together to find, you know, if it's a complementary angle, what's this angle kind of thing. Or another one here, complementary angles. Oh, you are a cutie. Oh, you are too. You have angles here, acute, get it? <laughs> You're acute. Complementary angles are acute. <laughs> Moving on. 
Supplementary angles are angles whose are two angles whose sum is 180. So supplementary angles are these down here. They would equal a straight line. 180 degrees is a straight line. So here's the difference. Complementary, 90. Supplementary, 90. Remember, complementary, oh, you're so acute. They have to be under 90 degrees. Supplementary are over. One of them is going to be over 90. So one of them is not going to be a, an acute angle. Perpendicular angle, two lines which meet at a right angle, 90 degrees. It could be perfect like this where they, they draw it in here all perfectly, or you might just draw it like this and put a 90 degree box there. Same thing, I'm not too technical on drawing. All right, so in the figure, M and N are parallel and T is its transversal. You're gonna see this a lot, by the way. Uh, if M, if measure of angle seven is 120 degrees, find the measure of angle two and the measure of angle eight. Okay, I always like to label these things. So this angle is 123 degrees. Okay, so since angle 7 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, my apologies. So, oh, that's what I say. Label this, and then what do I need to find? I need to find this one, and I need to find this one. So, since angle 7 and angle 2 are alternate exterior angles, they are congruent. So, the measure of angle 2 is 123. So, therefore, angle 2 will have to be 123 as well. All right, since 7 and 8 are corresponding angles, they are also congruent because 7 and 8 are corresponding in the same place compared to the transversal. So therefore, that one is also 123 degrees. So the measure of angle 8 is 120 degrees as well. In the figure here, this is trans cut by a transversal. If angle 4 is 57 degrees, oh, this is your turn, go. All right, if this is 57 degrees, find the angle of one of angle 5 and of angle 1. All right, so angle 4 is congruent to angle 5, angle 4 to angle 5 because of alternate interior angles. So angle 5 equals 100 equals 57. And angle 5 and angle 1 are congruent because they are corresponding angles. So therefore, both are 57 degrees. Surprise, surprise, I work at a school. All right, if angle D is 57 and angle D and E are complementary, what is the angle of angle E? And they give you a bunch of options here. So let's read that test item. So since angle B, D and angle E are complementary, then we know that angle D, that would be this angle, plus angle E are going to equal 90 degrees. So therefore, we could substitute this 53 degrees in for D. So we take that complementary angle, we replace D with 53, like I just pointed out, and then we can subtract 53 from both sides, and then we get the measure of angle E is 37 degrees. So the answer would be B of these options up here. Your turn, give it a shot, go. All right, so if G, and angle G and angle H equal or supplementary. Remember, complementary is, oh, you're so acute because it's less than 90 degrees. So supplementary would be above 180, or would be over 90. So we're going to go with this. these equal 180 equals, let's say, angle G. Angle G plus angle H equals... 180, we know angle G is 104, plus angle H equals 180. I guess you can put the measure on there too. Minus 104, minus 104, looks like 76. 
is the measure of angle H. All right, angles PQR and STU are supplementary. If the angle of PQR is this and angle STU is this, find the measure of angle of each angle. So the key here is these two angles are supplementary. So we know supplementary means they equal 180. 90 are the acute ones because you're so acute. Supplementary is 180. So we know that I can go angle here and angle here equal 180. And then I'm going to substitute these in. So find the value of x. We know there's supplementary angles. So then we substitute in x minus 15 for one, x minus 65 for the other. We combine like terms, x and x, 15 and 15, and 65. We add, to, add 80 to both sides. We get uh, 20, blah, 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 that one into there, and divide by two. We are not done at this point though. Don't stop here. Replace x in with 130 in the measure of, to find the measure of each angle. So we take the, we put that back into the original equation, PQR. We subtract 15 from 130, gets me that. We subtract 65 from 130. I get 115 and 65. Those two added together to check that would come out to 180, by the way. All right, your turn, go. Bam! Okay, so we know that they are complementary. Remember, if it's complement, it means you're so acute, so it's under 90. So these two added together, these angles added together equal 90. So I substitute in 12, uh, this one for that angle, and this for that angle. I solve that all out, and I come up with x equals 29. I put those back into the original one. So x plus 12 and 2x plus 9 gives me 29 plus 12 comes to 41, and then 2 times 29 is 58, minus 9 is 49, 49 and 41 is equal to 90, ta-da, I did it right, there's my answers. All right, so a road crosses the railroad tracks at an angle shown where angle 1 is 131, find the measure of angle 6 and measure of angle 5. So again, I always like to label it, I'm a drawer, so 131, and we need to find angle 6, and angle five. Okay, so angle one and angle five are corresponding angles, so they are congruent. So one and five. Five are congruent. So I can say the measure of angle five is 131. Well, we know that one, these, this is a parallel straight line. So since five and six are supplementary angles because they're on a straight line, we know that those two added together is going to equal 180. So I can take the angle of angle 5, subtract that from 180, and we're good. So the measure of angle 49 is, or angle 6 is 49. All right, your turn, go. All right, so measure of angle 1 is 48. They need to find angle 3 and angle 4. Well, this is just going to be supplementary angles twice. So if I supplementary from 1 to 4, so I know angle 1, angle one plus angle 4 equals 180. Angle 4 is 48 equals 180. It's going to equal angle 1 minus 48 minus 48. It's going to be 52. No, 42. 32. There we go. 32 equals angle 1. And then we'll do that same thing over. So now we'll go angle. Oh, I put that in for the wrong one there. So that should have been over there. And this should have been angle 4 equals 32. So angle 4 plus angle, sorry, angle 3 equals 180. Put 32 in here. We subtract 32. So that's going to equal 180 plus angle three minus 32. It's gonna equal the same thing as the original. So that's gonna equal 48. I'm sorry, 132. It's gonna equal 132, 132, 132. My apologies on that one. I am minorly distracted. Then that will equal 48. So 48 and 148 and 32. And I'll see you in class.